Good day everyone! The assigned topic to me is The Marks of an Educated Man by Nicholas Murray Butler and this work of Butler is an essay. So, I will be your reporter for today, Hazel Antonio from BSC English 3. So, the content of my report consists of the background of the author, main idea of the essay, what type of essay is it, and then the interpretation and reflection. So, for the background of the author, Nicholas Murray Butler was born on April 2, 1862 and died on December 7, 1947. Butler was an educator and university president, an advisor to seven presidents and friend statesmen in foreign nations, recipient of decorations from 15 foreign governments and of honorary degrees from 37 colleges and universities. So, Butler also is a member of more than 50 learned societies and 20 clubs, the author of a small library of books, pamphlets, reports, and speeches. So, he is also an international traveler who crossed the Atlantic at least a hundred times. So, uh, he was called Nicholas Miraculous Butler by his good friend Theodore Roosevelt. So, for a uh, main idea of the essay, so Nicholas Murray Butler, The Marks of an Educated Man, is concerned with the five traits of an educated man, which are the five traits consist of correctness and precision in the use of the mother tongue, number two, refined and gentle manners, three, power and habit of reflection, four, power of growth, and then the five, uh, the last one, possession of efficiency, or the power to do. So, correctness and precision in the use of mother tongue. So, the quiet, shocking slovenliness and vulgarity of much of the spoken English, as well as not a little of the written English, which one hears and sees proves beyond pre-adventure that years of attendance upon schools and colleges that are taught to be respectful have produced no impression. So, when one hears well-spoken with pure diction, correct pronunciation, and an almost unconscious choice of the right word, he recognizes it at once. So, how much easier he finds it to imitate English or the other sort. So, as an educated man, it is a must that you know what is the proper use of a language. Because correctness and precision in the use of the mother tongue is the first trait of an educated man according to Butler. So, when we say correctness, it is the quality or state of being free from uh, error, meaning once you speak, it is needed that the choice of your word is always correct or free from error. And the precision is the quality, condition, or fact of being exact and accurate. The second trait of an educated man, according to Butler, is the refined and gentle manners, which are themselves the expression of fixed habits of thought and action. According to William Wickham, uh, Manners Maketh Man, um, he wrote this in Winchester and at Oxford Gate. So he pointed to a great truth. When manners are superficial, artificial and forced, no matter what their form, they are bad manners. When, however, they are the natural expression of fixed habits of thought and action, and when they reveal a refined and cultivated nature, they are good manners. There are certain things that gentlemen do not do, and they do not do them simply because they are bad manners. Exactly. The gentleman instinctively knows the difference between uh, the difference between those things which he may and should do and those things which he may do and not to do. So, a true educated man knows the difference between the right and wrong and the things that he or she to do or not to do. It is very true that manners make it man. Today, this expression broadly means that your mannerisms and characteristics makes you who you are. Having a good manners and respect is truly defined as one of an educated man. So next, a third trait of the educated man is the power and habit of reflection. Human beings for the most part live wholly on the surface of life. 
they do not look beneath the surface or far beyond the present moment and that part of the future which is quickly to follow it. They do not treat those works of prose of reflection and introduce that power and habits in others. When one reflects long enough to ask question how, he is on the way to knowing something about science. When he reflects long enough to ask the question why, he may, if he persists, even become a philosopher. The third trait um, is all about reflecting. So they do not read prose and poetry, but they must prefer to think and sit in one place. And by doing that, they can reflect and have power to know about everything. A fourth trait of the educated man is the power of growth. He continues to grow and develop from birth to his dying day. His interests expand, his contacts multiply, his knowledge increases, and his reflection becomes deeper and wider. It would appear to be true that not many human beings, even those who have a college education, continue to grow after they are 24 or 25 years of age. By that time, it is usual to settle down to life on a level of more or less contented intellectual interest and activity. So the whole present-day movement for adult education is a systematic and definite attempt to keep human beings growing long after they have left school and college and, therefore, to help educate them. The fourth trait of an educated man, according to Butler, is very easy to understand because an educated man has a power to growth. It is not like staying uh, on what characteristics, interests, knowledge that you have, but developing deeper and wider. So you are having a power to grow and mature more as a fourth trait of an educated man. So the fifth and the last trait of the educated man is his possession of efficiency or the power to do. The mere visionary dreamer, however charming or however wise, lacks something which an education requires. The power to do may be exercised in any uh, one of a thousand ways, but when it clearly shows itself that that is evidence that the period of study and of companionship with parents and teachers has not been in vain. The essay entitled The Marks of an Educated Man by Nicholas Murray Butler is an expository essay because it tells the reader what are the outstanding traits of a well-educated person or man. So for my interpretation, The Marks of an Educated Man by Nicholas Butler is very timely. It talks about how to be an educated man. So if we want to be an educated person or man, we need to follow these five traits of Butler. I know that Nicholas Butler outlined the true essence on how to be an educated man. And I think we don't have nothing to lose whether we follow it or not. So for me, if we follow those five traits, there will be an instance that we will learn different kinds of things in this world. And by exploring, exploring, we will be acquiring new knowledge that in the past we don't have. We will no longer stick to the standards that the world says on how to be an educated person. But what would be the result if the world standards and butlers um, combined? So of course, the outcome will be good because they are both teach on how to be an educated man. And for my reflection, so the essay of Butler was very meaningful. We can be able to use it as a reference for all the things, especially in socializing, interacting, and engaging with other people. Those five traits of Butler serve as a guide to be an educated man. So this essay is not only for the people who are currently studying, but in all levels, truly the essay of Butler can transform us into a better person, a more reflective, efficient, and refined person. So if you want to be an educated man, you must read this essay because this is an example on how to achieve excellence in life. And that ends my report. Thank you for listening. God bless us all.